both of these Apple devices are the two Otis Apple devices that are fully supported for the next generation for their OSs, which means this iPhone 6S is the oldest model that is compatible for iOS 14. And after a couple of days, I installed the beta version for both of these devices and used them as my daily driver. So in this video, I wanted to go ahead and share the experience of using Apple's Otis devices and talk about how the software runs on both of them and what kind of limitations does one have over the other compared to the newest models that's also receiving these firmware updates. So with that said, knowing that this iPhone 6S that I bought upon release back in 2015 is still being supported by Apple just makes this thing an incredible value. Then the Series 3 is also cool to see that it is still fully supported to connect even on the latest generation iPhone. And you can still buy it brand new on retail stores. But should you actually buy this watch brand new? Well, that's what we're gonna go ahead and find out in today's video. So the supported lifespan for iPhones is anywhere between four to six years. This is all based from the what we've seen in the past by Apple. Take for instance, the iPhone 5S was released back in 2013 and the last compatible firmware update was iOS 12, literally five years later. And then the iPhone 6S was the last compatible device for iOS 13, but now it's also the oldest compatible device for the new upcoming iOS 14. So yeah, you're really getting a lot of value for this iPhone success if you're still holding on to yours. Since you're still receiving a lot of its awesome features that's being added on the latest generation iPhone like the iPhone 11 Pro in terms of software features and such. So with that said, here's my experience with the iPhone 6S on iOS 14 beta and my Series 3 on watchOS 7 beta. So in terms of the home screen, New for iOS 14 was the support for widgets. And the widget controls and everything is identical to how it is on the latest like Face ID enabled iPhones. So I can literally tap anywhere on the screen and it will put me in edit mode. And when I add the widgets, again, this is identical to something like the iPhone 11 or 11 Pro. Just one thing I have noticed that the plus icon over here, it is different compared to how it is on those Face ID enabled iPhones. So this is somewhat different between those two devices, but nonetheless, it works exactly the same. There just isn't a done button, but you can still edit your home pages like this. Just how a very similar feature that didn't make it to the iPhone 6S is the back tap. If you go, if you're unaware, if you go into accessibility on like an iPhone 11 or 11 Pro as an example, I believe it also works on the iPhone 10. If you go in your settings, go into accessibility, tap on tap, back tap right here allows you to actually tap the back part of your phone to toggle different commands. This feature isn't available on the 6S. But if you actually go into your settings and go into the camera, you can actually change the video format by enabling this now, whenever you launch the camera app, not only has the camera app has been noticeably improved in speed when it launches, it's a lot quicker than it was ever before, even when selecting different modes. But if you go into your video, a feature that was exclusive to the iPhone SE and all the Face ID iPhones was the ability to switch between resolutions by simply tapping on a corner of the display. It now is available on the 6S. And not only that, the little icon right here that shows you what's being used from privacy concerns. It's green, so green lets us know that our camera is enabled. The orange will basically means that there's an application using your microphone. And if you launch the control center, you can see which application was also recently using the microphone or the camera. It marks that on top. So that's really awesome that those privacy settings features is on the iPhone 6s. Now for my day-to-day -day experience I have noticed that this phone does tend to heat up a lot quicker and battery life does drain a lot quicker as well but since this is up early beta hopefully this gets resolved in the future but even on iOS 13 I noticed that this iPhone 6s had a heating issue so it goes through battery life a lot quicker. And yes, you can still check the battery life percentage. And if you notice, my battery life is at 100%. Capacity, that is because I recently upgraded. So even though this has a new battery, it's still draining the battery a lot faster on the 6S. 
but then the internet speed control i recently upgraded my wi-fi to wi-fi 6 and when running the speed test between the iphone 11 and the 6s and seeing how close they are it's really incredible so brow when it comes to browsing the web and stuff like that the download speed is quick it's just like a modern smartphone and while we're still on safari Privacy changes, as I previously mentioned, is exactly the same how it is on the iPhone 11 Pro or other newer generation iPhones. You still have the ability to translate languages in case you're on a foreign website. And then you can also check your tracking cookies. So all these major changes that came to iOS 14 is indeed here. This also includes Apple CarPlay. The wallpaper support is also available on the 6S. And when it comes to performance, I noticed that Apple CarPlay runs silky smooth so there's no performance loss even on these older hardware found on the iphone success other features that's worth talking about is the picture in picture mode in fact i just found out if you go into your settings and you go into general and right here in picture in picture enable start picture in picture automatically now whenever you're on safari and you're playing a video like on youtube or something when you hit the home button, it, it will immediately automatically put itself in picture in picture. So you can multitask just fine. And even though this has a smaller display, uh, I'm still able to see the video just fine. And you can also change the size and move it around really easy as well. But besides that, just like the iPhone 11 Pro, you have access to the new translation app, which works fairly well. You have your emoji search and the keyboard. Then the Apple Watch app also doesn't have any limitations as well. You can still tap on a watch face, you can hit the up arrow to share it. And if you're using a photo that you have as your wallpaper for your watch face, you still have access to all the watchOS 7 features you expect to find on an iPhone 11 Pro as a fine example. You have your filters, so you can change the wallpaper to right here. This was new for watchOS 7. And then on watch itself, all the new apps are also here as well. Just the only con about watchOS 7 is you don't get those new watch faces. By new watch faces, I mean just the Chronograph Pro due to the smaller screen that's found on the Series 3. But Apple didn't left it entirely left out. It also got the new 2020 Pride watch faces to choose from. Then the most requested feature, the sleep tracking, is also on the Series 3. The only feature I didn't get, unfortunately, was the new hand washing detection timer. This was probably due to the fact that the Series 3 does not have auto workout detection support because the feature that was new for the Series 4 and the Series 5 is a support auto workout detection. So whenever you're doing a certain movement, the watch is able to identify the workout and will automatically heptic tap you to let you know if you want to track that exercise. Since it doesn't have this on the Series 3, it wasn't able to be fully supported for hand washing detection I'm assuming. But in terms of those three new workouts, it, you could find it on the Series 3. You got the dance, you got the core training, and you also have the cool down workout as well to help calculate the calories that you burn. And then the new complications are also here as well, like the shortcut complication, the bed tracking complication. Heck, even the control center is new on this as well. You can still edit it and delete certain toggles so now you finally have the ability to do that. And you also have the bedtime icon right here as well. The only thing it doesn't have that I notice is the Siri announced message. So that's not supported on the Series 3. Uh, for the Series 4 and the Series 5 on the beta, and I'm assuming the official one upon release, are both going to have the new Siri announced message. Was this enabled? Basically, Siri will just let you know what notification came in, like a text message, and will also read the body of that text when you have a pair of Bluetooth headphones paired to your device. So there you have it. Besides the battery overheating issues, which I'm hoping Apple resolves, very likely they will. If you're okay of the device being a couple seconds slower compared to the latest generation iPhone, this is a good device. It'll get the job done. I can tell you one thing, you're more than capable of just sending text messages, answering phone calls, checking on social media stats, and it has a decent camera. For basic phone tests, this thing is still very capable. Just if you're aiming more towards gaming and such i would recommend at least go ahead and upgrade to like the iphone 8 or the se as a better value if you're on that budget but it's still left unclear if ios 14 is going to be the last supported firmware for the iphone 6s then as for the series 3 when it comes to just doing basic apple watch stuff i mean this thing will get the job done and still is one of the best 
fitness tracker wearables out there in the market in my opinion as it does more than just simply count your steps your calories burn but also has built-in gps at no additional cost as that's standard and it still has a gorgeous oled display anyways share me your thoughts your opinions about these older apple devices do you think they're worth buying are you still holding on to yours feel free to comment that down below guys if you'd like to see some awesome tips and tricks you could do on ios 14 you can go ahead and watch my previous videos i pretty much cover all my favorite features and some awesome goodies that you could do on iOS 14 that wasn't really mentioned during WWDC. And then that video over there, that's just a video that YouTube is suggesting specifically for you. Their algorithm bots believe you're going to like it, so feel free to watch that or this. Anyways, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.